you are a fan of the bean trees or maybe the poison wood bible, if so, you're in luck because the best-selling author behind these gems and so many more, Barbara Kingsolver, is joining me in studio. Hello. Hi. So great to have you here. I'm thrilled to be here. Everyone was so excited when I told them you were coming in. Well, I'm, I'm you're here. equally excited. <laughs> I've been waiting 18 years to come to South Africa. Your first time in South Africa. It's my first time and, and it has... A, it has exceeded even my 18-year accumulation of expectations. Amazing. I'm, just ex I'm so excited. Well, what a time to come with all that chaos in Parliament last night. Well-timed, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't just about me, all those traffic yeah, yeah, yeah. jams. <laughs> all the police. All the police. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, are you going to do any sightseeing while you're here? I am. I am. I'm, we're, uh, my husband is here mm -hmm. with me, and we're escaping for little, uh, little forays. We're going to drive the garden route. Um, I spent, uh, we came in a couple of days early yeah. into Johannesburg, so we spent a day in Soweto. We spent a day at Maropeng, walking on the veldt and... Beautiful. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're, we're seeing as much as we can. Are you going to go up Table Mountain? That's the plan. Tomorrow morning we're going to hike up. We're not going to take the funicular. We've got, we've got th three hours and we have, we've been sitting, you know, I've been sitting and sitting and uh -huh. interviews in cars and so I have some... Um, some energy, you know, to, to run up the mountain. Are you a fit person? Because I've tried to walk up there and it's it's a little bit of a feat. Ask me tomorrow. Okay. I'll find out. <laughs> You'll be really sore, maybe, or maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but the good thing is, once you climb up, you can take the cable car down. That's maybe the plan. <laughs> or maybe, can we flag it halfway? Can we say, help? <laughs> SOS. <laughs> SOS. You can. I'm not sure if anyone will come. <laughs> <laughs> They'll send down a rope and say, hang yeah. on. <laughs> If that happens, don't get on the road. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a splash that would make. <laughs> yeah. International author hanging on the side. <laughs> Dangling the from the funicular. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I just have to ask you, since you're in studio, I mean, after picking up your latest novel, um, Flight Behavior, which focuses on climate change, is climate change still a, a, something that you think about? I wish it weren't. I mean, is it something that you think yes. about? Is it something that I think it's something everyone is thinking about yeah. all the time? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything that we need to think about more, mm -hmm. honestly, and yet so many of us would prefer not to. So it seemed clear that I needed to write a novel, not so much about, you know, the physics of climate change yeah. or, or this or that, but but about people and climate change and why we don't want to think about it and why it's hard for us to talk about it and all of those things because a novel is about how people tick. Mm -hmm. And so this is a novel about what we don't talk about when we don't yeah. talk about climate change. Kind of the different forces against, you know, that sort mm -hmm. of line up against each other, the rural versus the urban ways of thinking, the educated, versus the uneducated and sort of more suspicious of the, edu you know, mm -hmm. and, and most of all communities of faith versus communities of science. All of these different groups sort of have trouble communicating across a divide. And that's, that's such interesting terrain for a novel. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's what I did. Cool. And I tried to make it a really good story. And it was. Well, thank you. <laughs> Why do you think people um, have such a hard time discussing climate? Well, there, there's so many reasons, and that's, I mean, you know, 400 pages of reasons, yes. really. Um, but fundamentally, um, just as humans, as a human animal, we're wired for fight or flight, yeah. you know, the fight or flee response. And when we run up against something that scares us, we can either choose to fight it or run away. So flight behavior is about yeah. all the ways of running away that we do, not just from you know, I mean, climate change, it's, it's hard to believe it's because we mm -hmm. can't quite see it with our eyes until, you know, the ocean comes washing over mm -hmm. or whatever. But, um, but it's also hard to change our sense of what the earth is, what the, you know, the ground under our feet. The, 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 the weather is something we just trust. And how do mm -hmm. we shift our minds? Uh, how do we really believe that we have made such a change yeah. on our to our to our home that it might not be our good home anymore um it's nobody wants to think about i that. think it's scary to think about it's terrifying yeah and it's that's terrifying well, and so yeah so of course i sort of specialize in in not writing about the things that nobody wants to think about yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but 
but that's a it's a thrilling challenge you yeah. know I, I just when I start a book I have to be terrified uh, when I go to my desk to begin a new book I, I want to choose a something that not just that I've never done before mm -hmm. but maybe that nobody's ever done before because that's what keeps me awake you know that's what mm -hmm. keeps me coming to work every day to see if I can do this and I, I, I usually start out thinking well it probably can't <laughs> it's gonna be a mess I mean I know I did this a few times before but this time it's, it's just gonna be horrible well you didn't think you were ever going to be a writer no 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 you were a scientist I was I was lucky enough to get to go to college mm -hmm. to university and so I studied something that I thought would be sensible and would give, you know, give me a chance of getting a job. Yeah. But I was always scribbling, you know, I was writing stories yeah. and poems. And I actually still have my chemistry textbook from university, and it has poems written all around really? the margins. Yeah, because, <laughs> because I always had words and yeah. stories and language in me that needed to come out. I, did, I never imagined I would be lucky enough to get to do that for a living. Mm -hmm. I am so lucky. You really are. Oh, I am. I mean, I get up in the morning and say, yay! You know, <laughs> I, get to, I get to make up stories for a living. I don't know that I'd want to see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, one cup of coffee and then, okay, I'm, good. then I'm yay. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's a, just another whole level of yay to get to come to literally the opposite side mm -hmm. of the globe and meet people here with their you know, their tattered copy of Poison of a Bible saying, this, this book means something to me. Yeah. I'm so, I'm, I mean, astonished doesn't even start to cover it. I'm amazed and I'm so honored that the readers of this country have, have taken, taken something, could find something in that book that yeah. was meaningful to them.